Welcome to the SAP CO Modules Training Course. CO stands for Controlling, which is SAP's Management Accounting Module. My name is Nashad Najimuddin. I am a certified SAP consultant with over a decade of experience in SAP implementation and support. I have completed four greenfield, three global rollouts and eight continuous business improvement projects. I live in Melbourne, Australia and I work with top tier consulting firms such as SAP, Accenture, IBM, Fujitsu and UXC Oxygen. My academic background is in information systems engineering and I followed up with a masters in MBA majoring in finance. I am also a certified project management professional. Let's look at how to approach the CEO course. First go through all the videos without having to do any configurations or setting in the system because then you will have an idea of what is happening throughout the course. All the videos are sequential and especially for the CEO course you have got to do these steps one at a time to come to the last processes. At least go through the videos till the end of the case study then you will have an idea of the end game. The CEO module is all about costing. So you are trying to cost your products, analyze your cost to your cost centers, your orders, production orders, your product costing and so on. And then you have your actual cost. You can analyze your cost against your plan cost and then see the variances. And if you want, you can do some settlements, analyze the profitability of your products and so on. So once you have an idea of all the videos, then go through the videos again, but then start configuring on the system and also create your data as you go along. The key to learning the SAP CEO module is all about practice. That's why I put this three times, practice, practice, practice. You got to create multiple examples of your products and multiple scenarios. So you will get a good grasp of the CEO module. I have used very simple and practical examples throughout my videos. For example, I have created products like cakes, muffins or making a kite. Simple products with little materials and little activities. So you also when you do your examples, try to create simple items. So it easily for you, you can grasp the idea of how the CEO module works. The CEO module is very much integrated with the FI module, the SD module, the MM module and the PP module. PP is SAP's production planning module. Of course, all entries are interconnected to the FI module, just like how SD and MM is interconnected. But if you plan to become a product costing specialist, that is a CEO module subcomponent called product costing, then I would recommend that you also take a course from the PP module as well. Because most of the CEO's master data for product costing flows from the SAP production planning module. So if you want to be an expert product costing consultant, then you should also know about the PP module as well. So good luck with the CEO course and enjoy the videos and please remember to practice as much as you can so you can get a good grasp of the module. Let's have a look about what is SAP. SAP is a German multinational software company known for making enterprise software to manage business operations. The acronym SAP stands for Systems, Applications and Products for Data Processing. It started back in 1972 when five ex-IBM employees started a small software company in Germany with just one customer. Now SAP has grown over 190 countries with more than 290,000 customers and they employ more than 70,000 staff members. It is the most valued company in the German stock exchange and they have overtaken industry heavyweights like Volkswagen and Siemens. Now in a company in a country like Germany where engineering has been renowned, a software company like SAP over the last 40 to 50 years have become the number one company in Germany. So it just tells the achievement and how organically SAP has grown over the last few decades. 
It's also the third largest enterprise software making company after Microsoft and Oracle. Let's look at what is SAP R3 and SAP ERP. The old name given to SAP ERP was R3. Now the R stands for real time data processing and the three is for the three tier architecture. So still SAP uses the same three tier architecture. That's the application layer, presentation layer, and database layer. The new name given to it is SAP ERP. ERP, as you know, is of course stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. So what do these three layers do? Let's start off with the middle one, the presentation layer. That's the SAP screen which you log into. It's called the SAP GUI or GUI, standing for Graphical User Interface. So it presents to the customer or the client and that's the screen which you use to do all your transactions the main uh, graphical user interface screen that's called the presentation layer now the database layer is where all that data is stored in sap all your master data and transaction data all the information is stored in the database layer the application layer is where all the transactions are processing so it processes with the database talks to the database, gathers all the information and processes. And those all the processing is done in the application layer. So once again, the three layers presentation layer is the main user interface screen, which you see the database layer is all the data is stored and application layer is where all the processing is happening. Let's look at the SAP ERP modules. SAP has many modules. The most popular ones are the FI module, financial accounting, CEO module, controlling, MM for materials management, SD for sales and distribution, PS for project systems, and HR for human resources. Let's look at what is SAP FI. The FI acronym comes from the financial accounting module of SAP. So financial accounting manages the financial transactions of the organization. As you know, financial transactions are recorded in the balance sheet and income statement of an organization. So the subcomponents of this module is aligned with the balance sheet and income statement. Now you will understand. Now you will understand in more detail when you look at the subcomponents of the FI module. First is the general ledger. General ledger is where all the financial transactions are happening. Accounts payable. So anything which you need to pay to someone is called accounts payable. For example, all your outstanding vendor payments. If you have any outstanding loans for the banks, it's all called accounts payable. Accounts receivable. So anything which you need to receive from somebody is called accounts receivable. Now under the accounts receivable category, you also have customer outstanding payments, um, some inventory payments, anything, some cash, petty cash, this all usually under the accounts receivable section. It's also might be called as non-fixed assets. Then you have asset accounting. Now the term asset accounting is specifically for the fixed assets. So fixed assets of course is your land, building, vehicles, Anything to do with the heavy machinery is all your fixed assets is coming on the asset accounting side of SAP. And you have finally the banking ledger. So this is where you create your banks, banks which you do for outgoing payments, incoming payments, checks, outgoing checks, incoming checks, anything relevant to the banking transactions comes under the banking module. So these are the five components of the SAP FI modules. Let's look at the SAP CO module. The CO module supports the process of planning, reporting and monitoring the operations of the business. It mainly looks at managing the costs. Whereas we saw FI module looks at the transactions of an organization, the CO module's focus is to manage the costs and looks at increasing the profitability. So the subcomponents of the CO module revolves around cost elements. Cost elements is actually a mirroring of the GL accounts, but specifically for revenue and expense accounts. So CEO module is more towards the 
P&L statement or the income statement of an organization. So that's why the revenue and expense accounts are usually mapped as cost elements. Then you have cost centers. Cost centers, mostly the divisions or departments of an organization are mapped as cost centers. The company's business lines is called the profit centers. So profit centers, you'll get both revenue and costs. Whereas in cost centers, only the expenses are usually posted. So any business lines, for example, if you take a multinational company like Unilever, they might have many business lines, health care, personal care, soaps and detergents, beverages. So these all can be different profit centers. Internal orders, you might not have heard about this terminology before. Internal orders in SAP is used to monitor short term projects or small objects. For example, if you have a fleet of vehicles and you want to monitor those fleet of vehicles individual costs of each vehicle, then you can create them as internal orders. Similarly, if you have a small marketing campaign or some promotion activities, you can create them as an internal order and monitor their costs. Profitability analysis, just like the word says, it deals with analyzing the profitability of your products. Rather than just looking at the profitability of each product, you can go into more detail and look at which at each region, how is your profitability? In each country, how is your profitability? For each customer type, what is the profitability of your products? For each distribution channels, you can decide what's the profitability of your products. And then you can even go into more detail for this customer in this particular country, in this particular region, how much profitability am I making for my products? Product costing deals with analyzing the cost to produce your items. So this will help you to, to manage the cost of your production by minimizing the cost or to optimize the efficiency the processes you can analyze the cost put a plan value put a budgeting value and see how much your variation is uh, between the costs overall the co module deals with managing the costs and increasing your profitability and all these components aid for that process let's look at the scope for sap fico now, there are two parts which you can follow. One is from the business side of things. The other one is in the consulting path. Let's look at the business path first. You can join an end-user end firm. So end-user firm is a non-consulting firm. In their corporate finance team or any other finance related team. And then gain experience in using the SAP financial processes. Now, having the SAP certification will automatically give you the basic theoretical knowledge and some practical knowledge. But with the end user firm, you'll get more real world applications. Some of the most of the multinational companies, in fact, like Coca Cola, Pepsi, Unilever, Reliance, BHP, Shell, in different industries, both government and corporate sectors, use SAP. One of the main advantages of having SAP is its integration with all the modules and produce real-time financial data. So working in a business environment will help you to gain more exposure in all the integration of SAP modules and have more practical applications. Especially working in a finance team, you'll be working heavily on the FI module. The CO module will be more towards manufacturing environments where they try to analyze the cost of their products and also you'll be working more closely with the sales team to try to market more in regions where your profitability has not increased. Another path is a consulting path. So if you want to pursue a career as an SAP FICO consultant, then it's best to join a consulting firm. Probably they take as a graduate intake or associate consultant level and you can progress towards becoming an SAP consultant, senior consultant, 
team lead, project manager, and so on. Some of the good consulting firms around worldwide are Accenture, IBM, Capgemini, Infosys, Tata Consultancy Services, Deloitte, some of the other auditing firms. Plus, you also get a lot of smaller companies doing consultancies as well. Pursuing an SAP certification gives you the accreditation from SAP that you are a certified associate consultant or certified solutions consultant. It's also a worldwide recognition because it's from the directly from the vendor. And more importantly, you get the knowledge of how to use the system and get a good grasp of the theoretical and conceptual understanding of the FICO modules. Let's look at the role of an SAP FICO consultant. Now, the role of an SAP FICO consultant goes towards in different stages of an implementation and support phase. To explain this, I have used the ASAP methodology. So the ASAP methodology stands for Accelerated SAP Methodology. It's recommended by SAP to go through these five phases during an implementation. Now these five phases can take anywhere between four months to even two years. Depends on how far the project has to go on the needs of an organization. Let's look at the first phase, project preparation. Just like its description is to prepare this project. It's where you do your project planning, define the procedures and processes, decide how many members are needed in each team, when you need to start off the training, and which day you're going to planning to go live, to have official kickoff session, do all the basic communication between your staff members, and so on. So this mostly dealing with the project preparation. Next stage is very important, and I would say one of the most critical stages is the business blueprint. This is the design of your whole SAP implementation. So in business blueprint, you're going to discuss with the users and analyze what is the current system doing and how do you want to go forward in SAP. Then you have to define the organization structure. This is the organization's departments and divisions and also how you want to have each processes defined for each of these organizations in SAP. And anything which can't be done standardized in SAP, you have a gap analysis and you see what's other customization program you can do to overcome this situation. You produce a list of blueprint documents. This has a basic design of how SAP is going to do the procedures for this organization. Give it to the users and get their sign off. You also have something called a functional spec, which is given to the technical team for development. So this business blueprint phase is quite critical because if you can get at least most of the processes right, you should aim to get everything as close to the real life example as possible. And if you can get the sign off from the users and they're quite happy at this stage, then you can, you can start doing the configuration. That is called the realization stage. So configuration is actually where you use the SAP system and do all the configuration settings. So it's important to get the business blueprint phase correct because once you start doing the configuration, you don't want to go back again to do any changes to the processes. It will be both costly and time consuming. So at the realization stage, mostly you'll be doing a lot of configuration and doing unit testing and integration testing. Unit testing is usually done by the consultant who does the configuration to make sure the system is working okay. And then you also have something called the integration testing. This way you deal with the other consultants to make sure their modules are not affected negatively by your settings. After all the configuration and your unit integration testing is done, then you are finally preparing to do all the other tests. So stress and volume tests, usually you try to see if the system can handle all the data loads. 
and you also do a lot of training to the users just before you go live and you also help them to prepare test scripts let them perform the transactions make sure they're happy with all the testing that's called the user acceptance testing phase and then you start doing the data migration before you go live this stage you'll be defining this cutover strategies so cutover strategies defining at which date you want to go live before each before the go live dates how we are going to do the data migration when you're going to do the transport settings is all the configuration complete is any additional stuff needed are you ready to go live if there are any changes going to go live so anything related to the critical go live stage is discussed during the cutover strategies and if everything goes well then you actually set a go live date it's usually you set during project preparation but sometimes go live dates can be pushed based on these phases and you set a go live date and from that day onwards the SAP system is live so at the go live stage you need to provide critical support to the users because they are just starting to use SAP in a live environment and there could be some hiccups down the way but if everything goes well and you can provide good support it should be a smooth go live it's not over yet once you're gone live because even after running SAP for a few months or down a few years you would want to do some business improvements to SAP and you also might have organizational structures coming which you have to do some changes to SAP as well for example you might buy a new company then you have to set up the new company code and set up those transactions you might have a new business line coming up then you might have to set up new profit centers you might have a reorganization structure then you need to redefine all the cost centers and profit centers for your organization so there will always be some other mini mini projects coming in and these are all another continuous business improvement of your organization so don't get too daunted by all these phases and role of an SAP consultant because once you start off in a project things will go smoothly and you'll be given your job description of what you need to do in some teams you might be just under one phase so you might be only in charge of doing business blueprint or you might be only in charge of doing configuration or doing only data migration or only testing in some projects you might be doing from end to end from project preparation to all the way to go live so this usually on a career path of becoming a SAP FICO consultant you will be involved in all these phases it's quite easy once you start getting involved in SAP even though at the beginning it might look to quite daunting with all the new SAP screens and all these terminologies and all the work you got to do but once you start working on SAP you realize how good this system is and how well integrated it's with all the audio all the other modules how real time data is all processing and you'll really get a good feel for the system and i hope you'll enjoy working on SAP and good luck on building a career path on SAP